everybody, welcome to the Liz and Scats channel. Thank you for joining us once again. In this video, we're going to be talking about stress and cortisol and how it affects your keto lifestyle. So stay tuned. In this video, I wanted to talk to you about things that are very close to my heart and things that I do for a living as well, my career. So today we're going to be talking about stress. Now that you're in this lovely keto lifestyle, we can now start to look at other aspects of how we can keep ourselves well and healthy for longer. Part of that is learning to keep the levels of cortisol, which is a hormone in your body, as low as possible. And so that's what we're doing in this video. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe and, and click on the bell. Now, first, I want to tackle the question about stress and what it means. Most people tend to think that stress is all about trauma, major trauma in their lives, and that's very true, it is. But also, what we tend to neglect is the little niggly things that can happen in our lives that raise our cortisol levels and our adrenaline levels and then cause stressful situations. So, for example, you can just it could be the guy who cuts you up in traffic, or it can be the kids dragging their heels, getting ready for school, or getting ready to go out. And it can also be changing your lifestyle, i.e. starting a keto lifestyle. So this is why we need to address the stress and make sure that uh, we keep it down to a minimum. When we are stressed, the adrenaline, which is a hormone, pumps through our bodies and it's actually from the primeval days way back in our evolution that we needed this adrenaline when we were running away from saber-toothed tigers and things like that. Of course now we don't have to do that sort of thing much anymore, thank goodness. And so stress manifests itself differently in our bodies. Now the adrenaline eventually when it's running coursing around your body will actually change into cortisol. And what happens with cortisol is that it raises your insulin levels, which is what we're all trying to avoid. Most of us are dealing with long-term stress nearly all of the time. I'm a clinical aromatherapist and a massage therapist and I'm finding this happening. People coming in saying that they're feeling a bit tense and uptight. Most people don't realize that they're under stress until it manifests itself and it's normally across the backs of your shoulders or it can be to do with your digestive system which is extremely sensitive to stress. What we're going to do now is to tell you how to avoid the stress. So here we are. Here's a couple of very easy tips. The first one is called abdominal breathing. Very, very simple. Anybody can do it. The main thing to remember is not to breathe in too much and not to breathe out too much for this exercise. Finding a nice quiet spot in your house, that might be difficult sometimes, but five minutes is all you'll need. And if necessary, you could even do this whilst you're lying in your bed before you go to sleep. Placing your hands onto your belly, just very softly start breathing in. And when you breathe in, we want to lift the belly up and out. Now this can be quite difficult for some people. This is why the hands on your belly can really help. So just breathing in like you're inflating your belly, and exhale down and so your belly goes back to normal. Just doing this a few times with you. Now I'm exaggerating my hands just to help you see what we're doing. Nice and gently. Repeat this exercise for as long as you need, focusing on the breath. If something takes your attention away, like did I switch the cooker off? Did I tuck the kids in properly? Just give yourself a minute, return to your breath, and then you'll find that it's much, much easier. This is your homework for tonight. Make sure that whilst you're lying in bed, just for 15 minutes, try this abdominal breath before you go to sleep. I'd like to see what happened. Let me know in the comments below. Let's try another breathing exercise together. What we're going to try now, I'm going to get you to breathe in for one, two, three, four, and at the top of the breath we're going to hold for one, two. Then we're going to exhale, two, 
three, four, and hold the breath out for one, two. Let's try this together. Inhale, two, three, four, and hold, one, two, and exhale, two, three, four, hold the breath out, two, and inhale, two, three, four, and hold, one, two, exhale, two, three, four, and hold out, one, two. You can try that over and over again. Something that I like to do quite a lot when I'm feeling a little bit stressy. So it's a nice exercise to do. So I hope you enjoy those two exercises. If you do, then comment below, and let me know how you're getting on, because I'd love to hear from you. I wanted to touch back also about insulin resistance and insulin, too much insulin in the body caused by cortisol. The problem there is that if we have too much insulin in the body, over time it can cause insulin resistance, which is the precursor to type 2 diabetes. This is what's happened with SCATS. He's been insulin resistant for many years now and it's actually manifested itself as type 2 diabetes. This is where the blood sugar can no longer go into the cells and be absorbed by the cells of the body and it's just floating around in the bloodstream. So then you have too much blood sugar and then as a result the insulin will pump out even more into your blood. So you've got too much insulin and too much blood sugar. And we can end up with type 2 diabetes. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you've liked what you've seen, then do give me a like below and subscribe and click the little bell so that we can stay in touch more often. Take care.